So the Ty Bollinger, last notes, Dr. Stanislaw Bezinski, MD, PhD. Now I, I have a hard time with the accents and it's not their fault. I just, sometimes I don't hear it quite right. And so just bear with me. You might want to have, watch it for yourself. Um, Ty Bollinger doesn't have the high tech subtitles and stuff. So you, you just have to work your way through it and hope for the best. Anti-neoplastones, kickback on NDI process, expanded access in UK doctors. Doctor doesn't have to ask government for permission to trial a drug or use on one patient. They just need to ask the producer of the product. Consultant, highly qualified, specialist hired by pharma company for $300 an hour, 50 to 100 hours work, but the doctor who'd like to do it cannot use it and cannot charge for it. They'd have to pay those consultants to do the trials. Bureaucracy asking for one document after another and has decided the risk does not outweigh the benefits. And this is on patients who are terminal. So they're going to die anyway. And if they sign a consent form that, yeah, I'll let you do this, then hmm, I don't know, right? I mean, then you have problems of, well, are the doctors really needing to test this drug this way is the person really terminal is that you run into all those issues too right so there it's a little more difficult than just yeah let them have it when they're terminal i mean because are they really terminal or are there other options so um but if there aren't and the person feels that strongly about it too the patient i don't know this system doesn't exist in any other country, he says. Communist country prevents their citizens from going elsewhere because people would enjoy life elsewhere more and then the knowledge would spread like a disease, he says. The doctors only have access to the treatments lawyers have selected for them in the U.S. The lawyers don't know which treatments are most appropriate to use to heal patients. He is being harassed by Texas board. Since his treatment was not standard and his terminal patients were living, he has peer-reviewed literature that shows his treatments work, but he's not allowed to advertise that he does it. His treatments are scientifically valid and he's mercilessly harassed. Only in the United States, he says. People, many people will continue to die because of white-collar criminals. Big med medical institutions manipulate lawyers who manipulate the entire system. They destroy the individuals that make discoveries since they want to have all of the control. Advanced. They don't really manipulate the lawyers. They just pay them money. Lawyers, on average, are sleazeballs. Yeah. And they're just going to go where the money goes. They are allowing themselves to be manipulated. Advanced colon cancer and glioblastoma and pancreatic. He has some patients who've now survived 20 years. These people are usually dead within a year. Adjigius Kazlowski's. That's a name. Latvian Treatment Center, he's from Lithuania. He had been diagnosed in 2009, had a spot of cancer on his back, they surgically removed it, then he started using rig beer. He had chemo, interferon, one treatment, trans... Translator interviews? Oh, translator interviews suck. That's, I, I was just, um, I was not understanding that, I was thinking that I was reading notes about what he was saying and I'm like, what in the world? But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a translator in interview. He doesn't have subtitles, and I have a really hard time listening to, you know, somebody going through the translation process, and then guy. It takes a really long time to get a very little of, of amount of information. Um, and anyway, I didn't get the impression that this guy's cancer was very serious. Uh, skin cancer is usually quite treatable. I, I don't know. I don't know though. But uh, you can watch it and decide if you want. I didn't get anything. If he'd from said that one. melanoma, that it uh, you know, bad, then it's serious stuff. Well, well, maybe it was. I have no idea. usual cancer. I sh it should be specified, but. Well, maybe he did, but I just didn't care because it mm -hmm. was very hard listening to it. Joel Salatin, Polyface Farms, and I've seen him before, and uh, he's always advertising on these documentaries that are for that are not really documentaries, they're just, they're advertisements. I, I watch a lot of them. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and in some respects, this is one too. But, you know, I'm very thankful for it. Ah, he calls it Polyface Farms because he has multiple species on his farm. Buy in volume to save lots of money, he says. Um, are you buying products that you don't need? You could be giving that money to this organic meat producer instead. 
Buy unprocessed organic food and process it yourself, he says. You'll save so much money. I can't stand this guy. You'll, um, you think organic is, gor this is a quote, you think organic is expensive? Have you priced out cancer lately? He feels good about eating leftovers. Good food should have color. Pork shouldn't be the other white meat. It should have a rose color. Pale isn't healthy. His eggs are way healthier than store-bought. He has a bit of a beer gut. Wheat belly? Or maybe it's a pork belly. He's dressed in a way that looks like he's advertising his product and speaks like a farmer, but not quite. It all seems like an act for the camera. His ego shines through the act. Don't buy his farm for him. Buy your own land. Our food is now inert, he says, milk containing formica. I'd say you're lucky if it's just neutral. Um, the biggest lie of our time, this is a quote, I'm quoting word for word here, I wrote it down, <laughs> I used the pause button because I think this is very important. Uh, the biggest lie of our time is that we're short of food. How are we going to feed all these people? Right now, we're throwing away enough food to feed the whole planet a second time. It's happened because of the inefficiencies in the industrial system and the global food system, where we have so much waste and spoilage, sell-by dates, dented, whatever. That's what's created that. Now, that's a lie. That is a bald-faced lie. He's a meat producer. And that's why he's saying that, because he's an organic meat producer, so it takes even more of the Earth's resources to grow his product. And um, there's actually not. Why don't you go on the, the food bank diet for a year and see how much actual food wastage there is. You can get loads and loads of bags full of Oreo cookies and that are expired. And... Um, Mr. Noodles and Kraft Dinner and stuff like that and um, lots of bread. You know, if you go on a, a poor man's diet, you can get all the free uh, bread that's just past the best before date that you can eat. You can load up on bread because it's free and it's uh, almost all um, non-organic and uh, so it's um, it'll kill your probiotic bacteria in your gut because it's, they've used Roundup to, um, as a desiccant on the, the grain. So, as yeah. As a desiccant, that's just to dry There's, it out. You can feed enough. the world two times over with that crap. But food? No. There's a shortage on food. And these people are eating it up for the rest of us. So, yeah, go ahead and buy his expensive food so he can feed his fat pork belly himself off of your dollar and out of our bellies because that's who's who it's coming from you're when you're producing that meat you're taking the food out of poor people's bellies and replacing it with roundup ready grain <coughs> he's a part of the problem he's ignorant he's closed-minded he says that the government tried to convince them to feed dead cows to cows years ago, and they didn't buy into it, since herbivores don't eat meat. Chickens and pigs will, he says, so you know what's in what his chickens and pigs are eating. Jordan S. Rubin, NMD, PhD, The Maker's Diet, was the book he wrote. He produces supplements. He was born to nonconformists. Father was a naturopath. Health foods were limited back then, but there are so many options. He didn't get vaccinations, but got 18 medical conditions and suffered for two years when in college. He had diabetes, symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, parasites, fungal infections, bacterial, and a lot of what is now collectively indicated in the disease we call cancer. He visited 69 medical experts and went to Mexico, Germany, nothing helped. Inflammatory bowel disease, he lived and ate clean and 40 days was healed. He does a sort of paleo. He became an organic farmer. He took the MMR vaccine and contributes to his IBD to con, oh, contributes his uh, IBD um, irritable bowel disease to that. So the MMR vaccine. Um, eat whole, conscious, omnivorous diet. He still follows it today. He wrote an entire series of books, including one on cancer, and has coached many people. In 2008, cancer diagnosis. He had exploratory surgery, embryonal testicular cancer. He had an undescended testicle. 
Um, Job put his face on the ground. Naked I came into the earth, and naked I will leave. This guy followed Job's story since Job had lost everything, children, job, money. He didn't want to make the natural health options his idol. He wanted to keep his lymph nodes and not do surgery. Uh, Garden of Life team, um, that must be who works with him. Uh, he had he told them that he had to leave work for six weeks. Um, although he, he told them that he knew God had already healed him. Um, 12 to 14 hours a day, spiritual healing. He was praying a lot. He believes that cancer is a spiritual disease. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. All raw omnivorous diet, two hours infrared sauna a day. If we don't heal our spiritual self, we carry the pain with us like a virus. He did the essential oil therapy, etc. Often in testicular cancer, um, there's an elevated HGC. So he had 278 um, HGC count, and then he got it down to 32 in two weeks. And then two weeks later, zero. And he had an instant of doubt, um, so he did the treatment another two weeks. More detox and spiritual battling, and it was still zero after the two weeks. So he was holding a glass of liquid herbs and still had fear, so he went to radiology department. He got the report enlarged lymph nodes and tumors he was reading but then that was he noticed that that was the diagnosis date and when he flipped the page and saw that he now tested normal he felt a lot better so it's funny to watch these uncut videos because um like a couple times this happened where there was a phone ringing in the background and they're like oh well we'll just cut there and start over you know and so they just talk it through but they, he's not cutting it he's just putting it all out for us without this is the um, uncut version, right? So you see all that. And anyway, um, don't, oh, he says, don't own the, the disease. Don't consider it a part of you. Go after it and know you'll win. Don't be a cancer victim, be a cancer conqueror. He did essential oil massage each day while, um, on a hat, hot infrared mat. BHW, uh, is, uh, he makes supplements, so that's his supplements. Uh, by his wounds, I think it's an essential oil blend. Uh, he applies them where Jesus bled for our sins, under arms, feet, head, side, 39 times to his back. He did it every day. Lymphatic therapy, phytotherapy, herbal therapy, fermented, powerful herbs. His diet was all raw, omnivorous though, no salt. Um, green juices with coconut cream. He made these raw butter drinks, a super lipid drink, to help the botanicals and food into the system quickly. So that's raw butter. It's raw, like he uses raw milk and stuff like that. So this is not um, what you're getting. Um, he ate raw organic grass-fed beef, raw, and raw salmon for the omega-3 in this astaxanthin. He ate a lot of coconut oil, took a, a lot of <laughs> systemic enzymes, 60 per day. He got a lot of sun or took a whole food um, vitamin D supplement. And he took lots of raw fats to build the system, to pull waste out raw pa pastured eggs, mineral clays, met metabolites and probiotics foot baths and walked on the beach. It's total commitment to healing. It starts with faith and confession. To heal with cancer. Another of his book titles. Oh, to hell. To hell with cancer. Um, he, because that's where he thinks cancer comes from, is hell. Um, he ate 12 raw eggs a day. That was the key for him. Uh, don't just survive, conquer, he says. And he says, you got to get that bitterness out of your body. Um, that's the most important thing, and I have troubles with that. I know I, I really, I, I need to work on things like that. <sighs> Christina Yovanko, Riga, Latvia, overcame melanoma. Another translator in interview. Get subtitles, Thai. Molon back. Palliative care. Something bad about liver, fourth stage and malignant. She trusted her Ukrainian doctors at first and didn't understand the effects of diagnosis right away. Palliative to ease pain and make patient more comfortable while dying. She has daughters and looks quite young. 2009 her dad died and she was responsible for whole family so she had to live. She knew Rick Bear would work. Um, Pam Penny, Hope for Cancer Center, 10 to 12 year old, had tummy pain. She was walking funny scoliosis. Her husband and her um, did a 40-day fast and she noticed a pea-sized lump, ductal carcinoma. 
phase one. They said she wouldn't have even noticed it if she hadn't lost the weight. So, I mean, because of the fast rate. Um, she didn't do chemo or radiation 2007 to 2010. She was reading up on cancer. Tumor grew back, same spot, same size. Her risk of cancer is genetically low, and yet here it was again. She'd had scoliosis her whole life, her, was advised to stop running, and was told they could straighten it. Two months after adjustments, her thyroid started working properly again. Um, Blessed Herbs Colon Cleanse was what she did. Um, somebody bought it for her, she couldn't afford it. And uh, she, but they said, you, I'm going to buy it for you, but you have to take it. And so she did. She held true to her word, even though she was very sick from it. She was throwing up. She didn't look um, like she'd had parasites, uh, like her husband and her, they'd been healthy sort of people, right? Uh, but the stuff started coming out. Every person with cancer has liver flukes. Every person with cancer has parasites. She'd been infested as muco mucoid plaque came out. She realized that the parasites were trying to hide in her, first in her um, mucus and then in her stool. When she went to the washroom, she used a strainer to see them. She did the parasite thing for six months. She followed the cancer step out of the box, that's Ty's book, order of cleansing. She had the thousands, she had thousands of stones come out with her gallbladder cleanse. Like she thought her gallbladder was fine. She didn't want to even do that cleanse, but she she did the whole thing. So she had Zyto testing and figured out. So what she'd done is she used a strainer and then she was photographing every different kind of critter that came out of her um, so she they did the, the testing and they figured out she had 31 different types of parasites in her her energy hair nails and everything are improving um, it was the parasites which got her immune system down still battling the parasites she takes garlic onion pomegranates carrot juice oregano essential oils parasites figure out what you're doing and adapt they start running around um, in your body they moved from her intestines, started, uh, then she started having asthma attacks. And so then um, the, the person that was giving her the essential oil blends uh, gave her one to help her lungs then. And so then they moved um, behind her eyes and she was having such intense pain behind her eyes that um, she was throwing up. And now she's having trouble with her triceps so she thinks they're there. Pamela Boast, seven-year-old son, pediatric cancer, when five, diagnosed with leukemia, pre-B cell leukemia, build immunity, overemphasized detox, that's what she's trying to do, but uh, ecologist and nurse offer soda, popsicles, candy, he refuses the sweets. Um, they are full-time, on-the-road Christian ministry. He did chemo. She asked what choices she, uh, um, she asked what choices she had, but there were no choices, and it was, the implications were obvious. They've been, um, this, the government's been uh, taking temporary custody of children to make the decision for them. They're getting chemo. So there's no other choices for children in the United States right now. They're, um, she's only able to give him things in a food source. She had been told that she's not allowed to build up his immunity with supplements. Um, he's been on chemo for a year and a half. She's helpless with her own son. Zoja Sokolava, she had only weeks to live and then um, then came Rig Beer into her life. Uh, she's from St. Petersburg, Russia. She was already bedridden after four curse courses of chemo and couldn't walk. It's tough for her to remember. After a strong stress, she was dying with stage three cancer. 2011, she had surgery, chemo, full course, radiation, um, and more chemo was prescribed. Her family made a bed in the back of the van for her and drove her to Riga. Uh, blood tests, because they didn't want her, I mean she was already bedridden and couldn't walk from the first four months of chemo, or four, treat, four courses of treatment. So um, yeah, she, they knew she wouldn't be able to make it through those. So anyway, they um, blood test showed uh, lower results that, than a live person. The doctor was amazed that she was still alive in the state once she got there. Her immune system was boosted before they even started giving her rig beer. She was so weak her family decided things for her. She, she went along. I mean she was so weak she couldn't really protest. She followed them. She trusted her family and they, they were a good family. After two weeks um, of Rig Beer treatment, she could walk again. So, 
Um, that's it for this series. I would highly recommend it. And I'll probably do a, a talk about the whole thing uh, tomorrow or at some point. You can hear there's somebody in, in the background who maybe they haven't gotten their dose of um, drugs from the apartment That's building right. there or some, I don't know. But they're really making a fuss. This is a semi-regular occurrence.